Welcome back to DBL in South Central Louisiana. A small town has been on edge for years. Eight young women known as the Jennings Eight were murdered over four years. No closure and no clues. Could police corruption be a reason why? Here's the story on DBL's True Crime Chronicles. On the edge of Cajun country lies a small town, Jennings, Louisiana. It's a place that used to be known as quiet farmlands, but now the roads are a haunting reminder of the horrible things that happened there. It started in 2005. A decomposing body was found floating in a canal in town. It was 28-year-old Loretta Lewis. Less than a month later, another body was found in a different nearby canal. It was 30-year-old Ernestine Patterson. Her throat was slit and she was brutally murdered. Over the next four years, six more women were murdered. In 2007, Kristen Lopez and Whitney Dubois. In 2008, Laconia Brown, Crystal Zeno, and Brittany Gary. And in 2009, the last victim, Nicole Guillory. All of their bodies were dumped along rural roads and canals. I think we have more than one killer here, and I think they all run in the same circle. I think somebody knows something, but they're scared to talk. All eight women knew each other. Some were related. Others were roommates. They all frequented the same bars and engaged in drugs and similar lifestyles. After local police failed to crack the case, the victim's families hired Kirk Menard to investigate. You know, sometimes I wonder, are they any further along than what they were the first day they started? For years, people living in the town speculated local police could be involved. I think it's connected with the police because it's too many murders and you can't solve them. And instead of going on, back to back to back, you not, are you not can catch this man? The police department does have a questionable past. A police chief was caught stealing money and drugs in the evidence room. Deputy Warren, who was a chief criminal investigator, was caught purchasing a truck from an inmate and selling it for a profit. It's the same truck several witnesses reported seeing one of the murder victims in. They're getting tons of information um, about specific cops and deputies um, and their involvement in these homicides. Is it just a coincidence or could police corruption play a role? Who murdered these eight young, innocent women and why? And earlier, Tori and Lindsay spoke with a reporter who's working on this case. Take a look. We are joined by investigative reporter Mike Pearlstein from WWL-TV in New Orleans, Louisiana. First off, thank you for being here. Eight women, I can't believe I'm saying this, were murdered over four years, and their bodies were dumped on the side of a rural road. These killings were brutal. What, for you, emotionally, has it been like covering this case since day one? The task force was offering $85,000 reward. What was very... Uh, emotionally difficult were the lack of answers. I spoke into the families of these victims. Some had hired private investigators. There seemed to be no progress in uh, even, you know, generating viable leads mm. in this tiny town. The bodies uh, in six of the eight cases had uh, decomposed to such an extent that it made forensic evidence hard to find. In some cases, the cause of death could not be determined. All of these women knew each other and they lived the same lifestyle. So there have been a few suspects, but no arrests. Where does the case stand today? Tragically, all these years later, the case may be even uh, further away from getting solved than it ever was, primarily due to the death of one key witness who knew all of these women uh, he was a drug addict, drug dealer, pimp, and he had connections to all eight of the women. In fact, he was the last person to see a couple of them alive. His name is Frankie Richard, and he passed away in 2020. And buried with him are many, many answers to these burning questions. 
he uh, had given interviews, including to me, uh, admitting that he had pimped these women for you know drugs, prostituted them. Uh, that was you know the one sad common thread in the life and lifestyles of these eight women. Mike, I want to get to this point. There was some allegations of police misconduct in this case. And I just want to know, does that still stand true? And is there distrust in that sort of local, small town law enforcement with the community? Well, I would say that echo of police involvement is probably as loud as it has ever been. Mm. Uh, for one, how do you have eight killings in a four year span in a small town uh, with both a local police department, sheriff's office, and now an FBI task force and keep running into roadblocks, evidence that has disappeared. So what's it like for people who still live in Jennings and can't escape the tragedy? The people of the town are both distrustful of law enforcement and a little bit fearful. Mm. If you're able to, uh, whoever was responsible for this, get away with eight killings in a short period of time, uh, successfully covered up, and now the trail has, has gone completely cold. To learn more about this case, visit WWLTV.com. This story also is the subject of a new podcast episode. All you have to do is search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Mike, thank you for keeping these eight women in the front and center of the public's attention. We really appreciate it. We'll be right back.